Hey everyone, Aja here from Pandemonium. As you can see, I'm on my roof. I'm doing a few checks today, also some small repairs. And this is one of them. It's this roof vent. As you can see, it's starting to break apart. This happens, unfortunately, they put cheaper vent covers on here and they just get brittle in the sun. Although this did have a cover on top of it. I think this is put in later and this top has gotten brittle not to mention this bracket here holds on the vent cover and the screws were coming out because i came up here and it was just wiggling so that could be dangerous if it blows off and smacks somebody else's vehicle so what i'm going to do is actually put bolts in they put screws in this and that's not a very good design that's the problem with some of these um, rigs that are manufactured like this. They just pump them out and they cut corners. They don't do things like they should, probably should. And it's not always good and doesn't always last. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put bolts in with nuts. That way it'll hold. I, I'll also have, I also have lock thread that I'm gonna put on the bolts so they don't come loose. So the first thing I have to do is go ahead and remove this old lid. I went ahead and opened it so I could get to everything to take it off. So on each side of this hinge here, there's a little curl of metal. So I've got to bend that out so it can slide off. That's how it's held on. Okay. So you want it closed. Yeah, so you have to close this. So, oh no, roll it up more all the way. Now that the, the cover's off. There you go. Keep on going. Is that it? Can't get further, no. Huh. I wonder how you're supposed to... Okay. So Maybe I got off. this off. I just have to be able to slide it off. But you're supposed to get it off of this right here. I bought this vent lid from one of the RV shops. And they said it would fit. Because one lid fits all. It's supposed to be universal. Guess what? It doesn't. <laughs> So I'm going to have to go to the RV shop and get a different one. But before I do that, see, they just had these self-tapping screws which wiggle themselves loose. That's the problem. So I'm bolting it in. I've got these bolts already, well, one already done. So I've got three more to go. And then I'm going to tighten them up. Okay, those ones are done. So this lid is ready to go on. All I have to do is just put the um, washer and then the bolt on after we get the vent cover on and after we replace this vent cover. Reading the instructions and they actually want you to drill holes to make it fit. So we are attaching it to the old bracket here. We drilled a hole there and we're going to put a bolt in. And same with this, we're gonna put it into the old bracket down here so I don't even have to take the bracket off it just replaces the lid not the bracket so that's why it's universal but not exactly what I was hoping or, or what I intended when I bought this next time I'll just buy one that exactly fits so but this will work it's better than what was on there that's true <laughs> crumbling okay. and breaking apart All right. in the package came some bolts and some washers and also lock nuts so that'll be nice did you get a lock nut here's a lock nut lock washer a lock washer yep mm. okay, okay and, and then we just have to we already uh pre-drilled the hole may uh, possibly even the right size hole so, yeah dave got the hole drilled but, and well we had different screws selected now we're going with one that's slightly bigger it's okay. gonna work it's gonna work Okay, yeah, we're gonna get this attached. It seems first. like it's on there pretty good too. And then we'll, well, we haven't attached the bottom side yeah, we'll yet. Yeah, we'll still do the bottom, so. We'll get to that. We will. Come on, come on, cooperate, come uh, on. Oh, I don't think the hole's big enough for that. Um, oh, there it goes. Yeah, you have to pull it, pull it out a little. Oh, there it goes. Got it? Yep. All right, good job, thanks. Okay, welcome. Okay. All right. So now for the bottom, I just have to shut this lid. Okay, it's on and secure. Dave actually did the bolts and I added dabs of glue in just for extra protection. So yeah, Jeff, could you roll that down halfway? 
Thank you. That's good. Oh. And then we're going to now bolt this cover on. And we'll be good to go. Yay, I'm glad I didn't have to run to the store to replace that. That would have been annoying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oops. Let me get the... Hold on. The, make sure all the washers are out. All right. We are good to go. Should be one more. Right there. Okay, all done. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the mission has been accomplished. Thank you, Dave, for your help. You're welcome. So that is done. Just got a few more little bits to clean up, but I've already put up all the tools and everything. Since I was up here, I went ahead and cleaned my solar panels. It is good to keep on top of that and keep your panels clean. I'm pretty slack about doing that, so. I did get up here. They weren't actually too bad, just a little dust on them, and I wiped them off with just water because they say not to use chemicals on your solar panels. That's bad for them. So I just got a water and a rag and just wiped them off. So my rig is a 2018, and you'd think everything is in working order, but I've had to find myself replacing things uh, over the years, even on a brand new rig. This is one... This is one instance right here. This ladder is coming loose. And what it is, is this bolt has come loose and is coming off. So I'd have to take off all these right here, take the ladder off, tighten that bolt to the um, flange again, and then reattach the ladder. That's just a lot of work. I'm definitely not gonna get to that. But this just goes to show you, new isn't always better. There's still maintenance. My 32-year-old bounder doesn't have a loose ladder. I know. But you know these newer ones, though, that they actually um, skip corners because they're, they're yeah, like mass-produced. Shame on Coachman. Yeah, That's they're mass-produced. So they skip, the ball they some skip of this stuff. corners on, uh, on a lot of things, like the vent covers they put install the cheap ones. Even the inside, I've shown that where I had to um, re-screw where um, a piece is coming off. And also my cabinet, um, the bottom of it is kind of droop, starting yeah, to droop. Yeah, stuff just vibrates apart. Yeah. They, they should know these things good on the bumps, down, you know, down I the mean, road. yeah, they're, they're recreational vehicles, so people are going to use them on... Uh, out recreating. Yes, damn it. on dirt roads and stuff, <laughs> but they don't always make them for that, unfortunately. So, but I do still love my rig. It's awesome. They all require some maintenance. They do. No way around it. And I mean, you can always get those models that are like $500,000 that they put all like impressive stuff on there and nothing falls apart. But that's not always true too. I I'm sure on those rigs, you know, they have things, doorknobs falling off or whatever, but it is what it is. What they should have done yeah. was just put this together. As a, they should have welded that. It should have been a, a, a welded assembly, screwed on and been done. Yeah, that's it. what I don't understand and don't agree with. And I think they might've been cutting corners there is that so this flange bolts onto the ladder instead of actually being welded on and being one piece. So what has happened is this bolt has worked its way loose and now that, and it's causing the whole ladder to be loose. And some of these have loosened up as well going up. That one does not seem loose, but I think yeah, these one, middle ones are not loose. Well, you can tell if you wiggle the whole thing. Yeah, I think the top they're, ones are loose. They're all they're all loose, just yeah. not as bad as that one. That's the, Yeah, that so nice one. instead of making this one whole piece and bolting the ladder in, they bolted this and this is screwed in. So, yeah, definitely not a good engineering on their part. While Dave and I were on the roof, Jeff was nice enough to take these water jugs that we filled yesterday and fill my tank with the pump because I was starting to get low on water. Another part on the RV that was going bad, which is understandable, is this, which is the muffler hanger for the generator. And as you can see, one side has already broken, but it was held on by this one here. 
but unfortunately this one's starting to crack too so eventually that side's gonna give out so we went to the RV shop here in town and they did not have one, but they sent us the car quest, which we're here now, and we were able to find the part. I'm gonna have to replace this U bracket though below and use the old bracket, but this is gonna work. And this only has one strap on it, not two, but it's still gonna be fine. It was less than $7 for this hanger. So yeah, we'll definitely make that work. I'm just glad there was some kind of replacement. And it was cheap. I'm doing a load of laundry, so we decided to come by the park to wait on the clothes to get done. Brought Mumu here so she can run a little bit. Look it. It's an orange tree. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, there's so many oranges up there. <laughs> So over here, look, it's a lemon tree. Pretty cool. I think it's lemons. Is it lemons? Those are huge. That cannot be lemons. I think they're just oranges. They just haven't turned color yet. Yeah, because those would those are huge. I mean, it's literally like this big. But look under here. There's so many. Wow. It's pretty cool. Oh my god, can you see that? All along the top of the tree there, there's like turkey vultures. There's probably about 20, I'd say over 20 birds there. Oh, here comes one in. For a that one looks like a hawk, not a vulture. Oh no, it's a turkey vulture. It's landing. So you can see one there. Here comes another one landing in. You can see one right around there. Those birds are huge, but turkey vultures can get pretty huge. It's a cute little city park. Just gonna do a loop, take the dogs so they can get some exercise. So yeah, the birds are up in these two trees here. Oh, oh there's one right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Oh, here comes another one. It's landing right above me. <laughs> There's two there. They must be in these trees a lot because the ground is sprinkled with bird poo. All through here. I'm not going to stand under that. I don't want to get no poo on me. It's like someone took white paint and splashed it all over the sidewalk. Caution bird poop on you <laughs> come on mama good girl oh nice a rose bed they pretty much look spent besides this one look how beautiful that is no cutting of roses allowed thank you i guess they have a problem with that look how pretty that one is it smells lovely are you smelling it huh kellogg Smell good? <laughs> Whoa, someone just stole a car, I guess, and rammed it right into that building right there. Holy cow, they zoomed by us. I'm glad they didn't hit us. They wrecked the car right there. Now the cop is chasing him. Oh, jeez. I think they took it for a joyride after they stole it. Wow. Huh. So he took off that way at the park that we were just at. So this car stopped in front of me. I'm just waiting on them. Okay. I think all the emergency vehicles are here so we can move on. Wow, that was crazy. I mean, that car flew by me. It's 35 through here, and I was wondering why I was going 70 miles an hour. It just zipped right by. I was like, holy crap. And then I saw the police. I was like, oh, he's after him. And he tried to make a turn going that fast and crashed right into that building. I was like, oh, no. Wow. I guess the owner of that car is going to not be too happy. <sighs> Jeez. Okay, we are out going back to camp. 
getting out of this crazy town. This is Casa Grande. Crazy, Kellogg. It was crazy. <laughs> you like the park. Yeah, he liked the park. He's like, that was just crazy. Wow, there goes the cop. <laughs> The sun is about to go down back at camp. We are gonna take a quick walk and I'm gonna show you our camping area a little more. All right, Momo, you ready to go? Okay. <laughs> This is the Pinnell County RV Park. I mentioned this earlier. Overnight camping rates are $10 per night and you can scan this to get reservations and payments which must be done online only. Here's a location map. This is where we are and Phoenix is above us here. And they have the picnic tables, ramadas, barbecue grills, and these are the highways and stuff. These are all the camping areas. There are 23 in total. We are here and we're gonna walk around backwards and go all the way over through here. And, well actually, sorry, we're here. This is um, my camp spot 15 and we're gonna walk this way. And if you go down this road right here, this is where the main camp post is. I think actually at 12 and then I'll show you we're gonna walk through there so right there by camp number seven is a porta potty and they do have porta potties several of them spread throughout the park and this is the road that leads to the group area and also where the camp post is yes who's got the bright pink jacket on there is the park host site and there's a roundabout up here that I believe dead ends. And there's a huge picnic area up here for I guess when groups come in. Now the park host has electric and water, but the rest are dry camping. Another porta potty, and they do have a dumpster here for trash. So it's not pack in, pack out. So we're gonna go down this way instead. I thought it was a dead end because that's what the map up front says, but Dave looked on Google Maps and says it does continue on. Site nine. They do have nice camp spots here. I do like the gazebos with the picnic table and also the grill. Very peaceful here too. The wind's a little gusty today, but not too bad. It's not always blowing. Okay, well, there used to be two roads here, like it shows on Google Maps, but they have obviously closed it off. But it doesn't say you can't walk, it just says no vehicles. And they do have hiking trails all through this area here. Here's one of the signs for the trails. And like I said, it goes through all this area. It interweaves through all the shrubs and the camp spots and everything. You smell something, Bella, huh? Come on, Mama. I'll spread out the sidebar, way out there. Yeah. See that camper way, way, way yeah, out there? Yeah, that one's 22. Yeah, put the finger, put the finger right about there. <laughs> Go, Mama, go. The thing I like about these sites is that they are very large, so you can even fit fifth wheels in here or share them with friends. Mama, hey, too girl. far. Hey, girl. Come on. Good girl. Come on, get back here. <laughs> get, 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 get. Ah. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I would have no help. Kella. I'll just run around with three paws. Come here. Got something in your foot? Okay. There is a cut through road here, but this leads straight to the camp post. There are no camp spots on this road. So we are on one of the trails here. As you can see, it's not far from the main road. Oops, alarm. Get it, get it, get it. <laughs> Come on. This 
sky is beautiful this evening. That's the one thing about Arizona. It always has such pretty sunsets. Well, that does conclude the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again next time. Until then, stay safe and onward bound. Love you guys out there. Bye for now. Japan.